Hey everybody, it's the 3D Printing Professor, and we've kind of come to the end of the 3D Printing 101 course, but don't worry, there will be more coming in the future. However, it's time that we take a look, get some hands-on experience with the various slicers that you're going to get an opportunity to use. This video is going to be broken up into four parts. Each video is going to deal with one of the top slicers that you're likely to run into and use. Now, I recommend you use whichever slicer your 3D printer manufacturer tells you to use. If they ship their own slicer or if they have one of their own, then you should use that one. But if not, you can pick and here's a couple of the choices. Now, to save you from having to watch through a slicer that you're not going to use, I'm going to make one video per slicer. Let's go hit the slicers and get some hands-on experience and see if we can slice a, a very tricky model so that you can learn the settings that you need. So in this video, we are going to be taking a look at Cura, but not the latest version of Cura. This version of Cura 15.04.6 is the last version of Cura to come out before Cura 2 came out, which was motivated by the Ultimaker 3. Cura is created by the Ultimaker Corporation, but they've done a great job of keeping it as an open slicer that anybody can use. And consequently, this slicer got shipped with a lot of 3D printers. Now, I've got Cura set up right now to work with my Monoprice Select Mini, but the first thing you're going to have to do when you load up Cura is you're going to have to set it up for your printer. So let's first talk about how we run Cura. Cura can be installed, so if you're using Windows, it will have an icon on your desktop if you've told it to, or you can go to your Start menu, find the Cura program, and simply click on it, and then it will open. So now that it's open, we need to set it up for a printer. So you go to File, Machine Settings, you tell it to add a new machine. Oh, it uh, closed down Cura to pull up the wizard. You hit Next. You tell it which kind of printer that you have, and if it isn't on the list, you can hit Other, and it'll set it up for you. The main things that you need to set up are the size of your build area, how many extruders you have, whether you have a heated bed, and, uh, and your G-code flavor, and whether your Z-height drops down or gets lifted up. And that depends on what type of printer that you have. So mostly your printer manufacturer will tell you how to set up the slicer so just follow the instructions that they give you so I've got this all ready to go and you can set it up for multiple printers which is super cool now as it's set up right now Cura is set up in a very simple print mode and this is okay a lot of the time most of the time but i'm going to do a print today specifically that won't work with these settings and the print that i'm going to be doing is the is a tornado model originally created by margin elsenman modified by alessandro ranaciuli i think that's how it's pronounced and i apologize if i butchered your names but i gave it a shot and uh this tornado model is is well, I'm, use, I'm doing a tornado model because uh, uh, I live in Hurricane now, and hurricanes are hurricanes and tornadoes. You know, it makes sense in my head. But this is also a really cool model in that it doesn't really need uh, uh, supports. Despite the fact that it's, it's smaller at the bottom and bigger at the top, it takes advantage of those slight overhangs. So, to load the model into Cura, you either need to go to File load model file and go to where the model file is which it is right it should be right here print projects uh there it is Gullivand. or one way that i like to do it is i just like to go to the directory where i've got the file and then click and drag the stl file onto cura and there it is the model's loaded in now you might notice something uh already that uh it's a little bit big for my build space so, fortunately, Cura gives us the ability to manipulate files a little bit. So, I'm going to just click on the file. I'm going to click these. Down here, we can rotate, scale, or mirror. And also, if you click and drag on it, you can move it around in the build area. I'm going to click scale. Now, scale in Cura goes from 0 to 1. 0 being no scale, 1 being full size and any decimal number in between describing the size of it so if you want it to be about half size you'd put in 
0.5 okay now Kira's got a cute little button right here that says to max and if you click it it will automatically size the print to fit in your build area now the print fits in my build area and you can see that it's slicing it here in the corner with this little status bar but while it's playing with it I'm going to also mention that Cura has these little handlebars here that you can click and drag to resize it. But notice that if I click and drag any one of them, they all get resized. I'm going to put it back to max. That's because uniform scale is locked. So I can unlock that just like the little lock button. And now if I scale it, whoop, no, it's still doing it by all of them. Well, let me see. I can uh, make this 0.2. And there we go, it's still just as wide, but now it's not as tall. And so non-uniform scaling can come into use uh, in certain situations, but I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna turn back on uniform scaling, uh, set it to max, oh wow, I've, I've done messed it up, I need to put this back. Okay, unlock uniform scaling, everybody to 0.5, because 0.5 is a nice even number. There we go, I like that, that makes me happy. Click on model, scale it. Yeah, relock the uniform scale so I don't have to deal with that. Now it's slicing the model. And over here on the right, we have the view mode. Now the view mode allows us to take a look at our model in a couple of different ways. Most, mostly you're gonna be using normal, but you can also look at it in overhang mode. Now overhang mode colors the parts of the prints that have to deal with, with overhang that might fail. And in this case, the only place is at the very bottom of the print, which is on the print bed, which is where you want all of your overhang problems to be, because that means that it, it has something to print on in this case this model is great but if there were other places that I were worried about I might need to turn on to print support structure in this case I don't need to worry about that there's also a transparent mode which allows you to see the front and the back of the model at the same time this mode just hurts my head there's an x-ray and trans uh, there's an x-ray mode which is similar it, what it does is it colors the places where where you have two or three layers of things that you're looking at this way you can see objects that are behind other objects if your build plate is is getting messy and you're trying to line things up this mode might help quite frankly i think it's just in there for fun and then there's the layer view now this view is very important and i recommend every print that you do you look at in layer mode before you print it because this gives you the view more or less of what your print is going to look like. It's still loading that toolpath. There we go. Now we can see it's got the top layer on there. It's got a bottom layer. And if I scroll on down here, we can see the infill pattern. However, this isn't what I want. I want this to print in vase mode, which is to say I want it to be open at the top and have a hollow interior. Now, the other thing is, notice way down here on this first layer, how it's got these uh, these circles around the outside, that's because I've got brim on. Now, I talked a little bit about the brim and, and the outline and things like that, and I've got my brim settings way, way messed up. Um, I've got a lot of brims on here. This, this particular setup is really good if you're getting curling problems because it creates a nice stable base for your print and it will come up, but by default, it's usually just got one circle that it's going around. However, I don't even do that. I change my start G code so that it just draws a line and primes the nozzle all by itself. But nevertheless, uh, yeah, I, I'm, what I'm saying is we've got some settings that we need to, we need to address and we need to look at. So. We can't do it in this current view. There's not enough settings. We need more settings. So I'm going to go to, now again, this mode will probably work for most things, but not for this case. So I got to change it. So we're going to go to expert and switch to full settings. And do I want to copy the setting from my quick print? Sure. And here is the full settings. Now notice this sidebar is no longer big enough. We need it to be bigger. And meanwhile, it's working on uh, the print piece by piece. So let's take a look at what we got going on here. One shell thickness, 0.15 layer height, one shell thickness, top and bottom fill, 10% fill density. Wow, that's terrible. And the brim. Notice now I've got a little dot, dot, dot button next to my brim. I can click it and I can tell it 
how many brims I want. I can also turn on supports here and I can even pull up some information about the supports. How do I want it to do the supports? Really cool stuff in here. However, I don't need any of these. And in fact, I'm going to just turn off the brim in this case. I don't even need that. Uh, my filament dia my filament diameter is not two point. Boy, I'm glad I'm here. It's 1.75. I wonder what happened to that. That's weird. Uh, my nozzle size is 0.4. Now, these advanced settings have done a good job of organizing things in the basic settings that you're going to use most often, the advanced settings that you're sometimes going to mess with, but probably not very often, plugins that you can do to do cool things like pausing at a certain height, which is super cool. And then you can actually modify your start and end G code from here, which is, we talked about this in the slicer information, you can change the way it starts and ends a print. Now, I recommend that if you change this, you're probably only going to change it once and you're never going to touch it again. And that's fine. That's the way it should be. But we're going to say in the basic settings. And what I want to do is, uh, you know, I like the layer height, but I want more shells in here. I want the walls to be thicker. I'm going to crank that up actually to four shells. I want a nice thick vase. I want this thing to be solid. Uh, the top and bottom thickness is good. Now notice that it does it in an absolute measurement. So 0.6 millimeter bottom thickness with 15 millimeter layer heights means that I'm going to have about four layers on the bottom. Notice how thick those walls are. Ah, glorious. But I'm actually going to change this. I want a two millimeter bottom thickness. I want the bottom to be nice and thick, but I don't want the top. I want no top on here. So how do I fix that? Real simple. See the dot, dot, dot here under fill density? I'm going to click that and I'm going to tell it no solid top fill. And also while I'm in here, I'm going to say no infill, 0% infill. And if I do this and if I allow this to finish uh, its processing, so we got to wait for this slider to go all the way over, uh, then we will see something cool. So I'm just going to clip the video here, wait for it to finish loading its path and get back to you in just a second. No, no, it said 0% infill. Okay, so I just realized I made a mistake. It finished the whole process and it was still doing infill and I realized I did this infill overlap, which is supposed to be 10. That allows the infill to kind of press against the wall a little bit. So leave that one alone and change the infill density right here to zero. I was wondering why it was taking so long. It was taking forever to process the code. I'm like, you don't have any top layers or infill. What's your problem? It had infill. So this is where you change the fill density to zero. And you want it to be a 0% fill density, two millimeter thick walls. And it's just going to come on up here. See how this is working. And now it's loaded. So let's just go through. And you can see now we get travel lines on the top layer. So we know why is it traveling so much. It shouldn't need to do that, but that's all right. And as I come to the bottom, I can see as we get to the bottom, it starts drawing. Look at that nice thick bottom there. Now I'm still getting the skirt on here. And I'm not sure I want the skirt. Why am I getting the skirt? Well, I said no adhesion type. I click here and it's got the skirt. And so I can turn this down and I can say zero lines on the skirt. I'm actually going to leave it. It doesn't offend me that much. And here we go. I might I might want to decrease the number of walls. I may do that for the other ones because that seems really thick. But this is going to be a nice solid vase. And it was created, again, from a model with a solid top on it. Just by manipulating the settings, we took this print from having a solid top to being a hollow vase that we can use. And so so there we go. There's the, there's the hurricane vase all sliced up ready to go now we need to take that though those instructions that it came up with to draw this 3d model and save them which you just big save icon in the corner easy to find click that save it i i have a place that i like to save things it's called sd staging it's a directory where i can save all of my g code and then all i have to do is take that g code and process it now i normally like to uh, uh, name my files with a little bit of a code. Uh, this is the tornado vase because I didn't like the original name. And then I hit dash and I say, okay, I've got this set up for PLA. So I make a little note here that it's for PLA and I make a note that I've done it in vase mode. This is just a code for me later so that I know what settings I use to prepare this file. Then I can hit save and we're good to go, but I'm not going to save this because I'm going to have to do this again for other slicers. 
But there you go, that's how you prepare a model. And all you have to do now is take that G-code, send it to your 3D printer, and your 3D print is ready to go. So, if you're using Cura, if you're planning on using Cura, I hope that this has helped you. If you have any questions, be sure to ask in the comments below. As with all of my 3D Printing 101 videos, if you need more information, there will be a write-up coming where I will type this all out and get this information to you. As always, thank you very much for watching. Safety first, and I'll see you next time.